purpose, you know, the purpose of Camera Club Hawaii and what I wanted to do, not just for myself or the studio, was just basically to bring more education on photography, different types of genres to anyone who's interested here, you know, who wants to learn more about shooting, whether it's street, portrait, anything. And that was kind of like the main the main goal for Camera Club, Camera Club Hawaii. And um, I figure the first person to start off with, you know, like we said, we start with the best, bring in, you know, bring you in. Um, you've, you've been awarded, you know, um, awards for different, your different, um, some of your work, you know, you have you have something traveling in that international um, Fuji fanboy. And I think it's over in London right now. It's uh, Dubai right Dubai. now. Dubai, oh yeah. shit, nice. So that that's a Fuji film, well, Fuji fanboy, uh, fourth annual best of show. So I have an image that took second place in the X100 class. So okay. they had categories based on the GFX, X series and um, X100 series for the Fuji film cameras. Okay, so they have it all separated by bodies. Yeah. Okay. So it's not necessarily the type of genre of photography. It's more by bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And did you just enter for the 100V or did you enter any other bodies in as well? Because I know you shoot, you got the X-T4, you got an X-H1, you got an X-Pro2. The list goes on and on for all your Fuji bodies. You know, it seems like you... You got a lot going on. So it, was there anything else you entered in the contest? I entered a few images for the X-Pro, okay. which would have fell under the X-T or the X-Series. And then um, a couple more for the X-100. I'd like to say that I just entered one and one with that, but I did enter about five images. Nice. So we're taking a look at this image now that you entered for the 100V. Where was this shot? So this is at uh, Walmart on Fort Street. Okay. So it was a morning shoot. Um, I was just canvassing the area like I normally do, and uh, I saw this spot of light, which is normally how I identify where I'm going to shoot. I'm, I'm looking for the background and the light first, and then just wait for the right person to come by. So I had about three or four other shots. Um, this was my, my favorite. What she, made this, um, this person the right person? Um, her posturing. She's kind of looking off to the side. She just looked a little more interesting. Um, I think she has blue gloves on, so blue and the blue on the Walmart. Nice. See, little tiny things. Things that I didn't notice when I shot it, but I tell myself that's why I shot it after. <laughs> and after how long did and how long did you have to wait at um wait at this spot to get this shot? This one wasn't too long because early morning and late afternoon light, the light travels pretty quick. So I, I might have been there about 10, 10 minutes. Nice. There was a market there too, so I'm actually uh I had to move around jockey for position so I didn't get any tents and other people in there. I like to isolate my, my subject. And is this straight out of camera or what type of post process do you do to get, you know, this final product? Yeah, I'd like to be a straight out of camera. I don't do a lot of post process. So part of the reason I got into street photography was as an exercise to, you know, I use a prime, so I have to move in and move out to, to well, physically exercising. Yeah, physically. Walking yeah, in and, and then, out, getting your steps And then in. just, you know, yeah, you know, for work, I'm shooting with zoom lenses and it's a little easier so and i have to do a lot of post-processing for work so i try to do this to i don't i get it right in camera and i don't have to don't have to do a lot of editing so i throw this in lightroom mm -hmm. um crop to straighten a little bit of exposure um i hit the contrast in the the black point a little a little harder but still real minimal slider movement and that's just because i like a lot of i like my blacks to really crush so and that's nice. really about it. Highlight sometimes. I tend to shoot a little overexposed, so I kind of dial it back to get the hot spots out. And the contest that you folks are, that you enter, or you know, when you enter these photography contests, what what are they judging these shots on? Is it is it composition? Is it exposure? Is it the use of blacks? Like honestly, I have no idea because there's normally a, a a jury. Okay. So and. This one, I'm not sure. A lot of times when I'm entering a uh, contest, it's a street photography contest. Mm -hmm. So they're all street photographers. But like with this one, the the main gentleman is got a background in street photography, but the other photographers were all across the board. So I don't know. It's probably comp it's probably basics, you know, yeah. composition and technical stuff like that. Um, 
aesthetics, of course. Right, 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 right. Not a lot fun. of my photos don't appeal to certain <laughs> certain genres. You know, they're just thinking, oh, it's just a picture of a person. So. And how long have you been using your Fuji bodies? Hmm. Uh, started with an XT1. I can't. I can't tell you. Now. Yeah. So. I, Six years, maybe. Okay. Is that about right? Six years. And did you shoot with anything before that? I shot with Canon before that um, for a number of years, and I actually got into digital with Pentax. Nice. So, um, yeah. I, I, once I got to Fujifilm, I was, I was done. I was happy. And what, well, yeah, that, I mean, that leads me to my next question. Like, what, you know, what made it, or what made that Fujifilm body it over Canon, who's been in the photography game for how long um i love canon it was perfect uh, i was a wedding photographer so i had a lot of gear when i transferred over to be working for media they provided gear for me so i had a lot of extra camera gear i didn't need so i wanted to switch it out i liked the retro look of the fujifilm bodies and um figured i'd go mirrorless give mirrorless a shot yeah. Um, got the X-T1 and immediately fell in love with it. The dials, I like having the dials, you know, right on top of the camera. I don't have to go through a menu. It just makes it fun. So um, that was the big part of it. I think they're sexy looking cameras, which <laughs> honestly, I think the look of the camera is, uh, to me, a little more important than the performance. I, I need to, I like that sex appeal of the, of the camera. And the fact that I can just control the dials up top are, are perfect. I can... It's it does definitely have that retro look, you know, to, yeah. to those old school bodies. And I see what you're saying as you walk around and doing your street stuff. Is it important to have like something covert like that? Or if I walked around like this around Chinatown, am I drawing too much attention to those who, who may be walking by? Generally, most street photographers want a smaller camera and they use a prime uh, just to be a little more on the covert side. But then they're jumping right in front of someone's face also. Anyway. So. Yeah, I, I when I started it was with my my other camera and other lens, um, zoom lenses. But it is easier to move around with a smaller camera. People tend to get a little less nervous. Right, right. Um, what was the craziest instance you had? I know you like shooting in Chinatown, and yeah. of course we all know that there's some crazies in there. What was the you know the you know like the worst instance you had shooting with 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 a subject or? anybody in front of the camera honestly if you go into chinatown they think i'm the crazy one they're all worried about me and um i would say i have some funny stories and i have some you know sketchy stories i mean i've been approached by groups of guys kind of jockeying for position around me trying to question what i'm doing oh. and i've been um, approached asking you know why did i take their photo uh -huh. things like that nothing real aggressive nothing Nothing happened it's okay. just they, that's they, good that's good they came up and then um but i did have one where yeah see i don't know if this is appropriate for this i was walking i missed the shot i totally regret it i missed the shot but i was walking and uh there was a girl with a nice floppy hat who i was kind of trailing not not stalking <laughs> but uh trailing because I, I figured she might go somewhere where i might want to take a shot and um as i'm following her just beyond her across the street was a homeless person laying with their butt towards the gutter and apparently they, they were taking a dump oh man yeah so what i missed was uh as the girls walking ahead of me the person got up bent over nice doo-doo brown butt and the girl turned around and looked at me and gave me this crazy like expression <laughs> so if i would have had that shot uh -huh. um i would have had that expression with a nice doo-doo butt Oh man! In one shot, now I, I that probably would have been some kind of an award-winning street photography I think, photo. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what genre you would put that in, but I'm sure we can. Yeah, yeah I guess it's street photography at its finest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And you know, if, um, as a as a portrait photographer and somebody who likes things, you know, matching color, you know, the color works. You know, looking at this photo, we got the bus in the background and the subject right right in the foreground, ready to cross the street. That's in. I mean, she can't be in a in a, any better color combination for that bus passing behind there. Like, how did like were you just waiting for this one? Well, I was actually walking, walking down the street, and I saw her, 
she was 100 yards away, but I saw the colors. And then the bus had just passed her when I saw, and I'm thinking, okay, so this is on Hotel Street, so that's all buses. I knew uh -huh. another bus was going to come by. So I ran. I ran, and this is, I'm still kind of far away from her. So this one, I don't like to crop a lot. This is cropped more than I would normally comfortably okay. crop. But I ran, and I got about halfway there as this bus started to come by. So I just, just started shooting. Just shot her, yeah. Because, I mean, you're, the colors, I mean, the colors are perfect. Yeah. And um, she even has stripes on her sleeves to match the. Stripes you know, on the I didn't bus. even, you know, it's those details. I didn't even, I didn't realize that until yeah, now. So. That one, I mean, I wish I was closer because, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a, this is one of those nice shots for Instagram, but I couldn't print this. <laughs> oh, I, after, I, yeah, yeah, because it's, it's cropped. Way too tight. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I know you also work for Midweek, you know, you've been um, with them for quite a while now. And if it's not, if you're not doing street photography, what, you know, what other types of shooting are you doing? Um, Usually it's just. So at midweek, I'm a senior staff photographer there. So I shoot for the paper, the midweek itself, but we also handle the special sections of uh, the Sunday paper. So I'm shooting a lot of food at the, for Crave and for the dining section in the Sunday paper. And uh, I like shooting food. So okay. if, if it wasn't this, I'd probably be shooting food, maybe sports. I like shooting sports. I don't do that enough. But um, yeah, it's if it's not work, it's it's street. I just keep it separate nice and are you using the same equipment when you shoot um when you shoot your food shots um i use an xt4 i have a pair of xt4s for work i keep my work gear and my my fun gear separate mm -hmm. i don't want my worlds to collide i don't want um it sounds ridiculous but uh i don't want work to feel fun too fun i don't want my fun to feel like work that makes sense. Because if that I ever sense, yeah. if I ever get burnt out with one or the other, then I lost my hobby. You know, right, right, this is right. uh, streets kind of like my release, so I keep the gear separate. Plus, they different purposes. You know, mm -hmm. these are rangefinder style; they're smaller cameras. Um, I try to go out a little on the, you know, smaller of a footprint. But for work, I'm definitely using zooms, and right. Larger lenses and double bodies and everything like that. Flash strobes. So okay. And how long have you been shooting with Midweek? I think on staff, I've been there about eight, maybe going on nine years. I was freelancing for them for a couple of years before that as well. So, so I've been there a while. Is it in the Pulse and, um, or what? Sorry. We had Honolulu Pulse. Uh -huh. So I was doing a lot of the Pulse, which is the nightlife stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then um, whatever whatever they needed, actually, as a freelancer, I was just, they, they would call me and I would shoot that. I was, okay. I was doing... Um, at that time, I was a wedding and event photographer, so I just picked up as they needed. And then when they offered me the position as a staff, on staff, I took it, but they hired me as the, the photo editor, so I was more or less a glorified color corrector. Yeah, I, it wasn't a true photo editor where I'm in charge. I was just there to color correct for skin tone for the paper. Um, and then that lasted about a year, and I said I need to get put out in the field. Mm -hmm. So they made me a lateral movement and started shooting and that's where I've been. That's where I'm happy. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. But this is daytime or nighttime? That's night. Nighttime. Yeah. So it was late actually. And do you do a lot of your shooting? I mean, if you had to prefer day or night, which one is it? Oh, daytime. Daytime. Yeah. I like long shadows. So night it's hard. So, um, uh, early morning, mm -hmm. late afternoon, right at noon too. So actually, uh, I shoot in most people's undesirable lighting. You know, portrait photographers would hate Super shooting. Super harsh. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, nighttime it has to be really dark, and they have to be under a some kind of a light. Well, yeah, I'm looking at this, and this lighting. I mean, it really couldn't be any more ideal with how it's falling right on yeah. on this subject here. And you is this you're walking by or you drove I, by? I was actually driving by, so I drove by, and I wasn't sure if I should stop, so I drove by again, and he was still there. Still there. So I pulled over. And uh, waited there for the shots, but it's at a it's at a light, so I have to wait for the traffic light to be green. But everyone at the lights looking at me, training my camera up, yeah. on this guy, so I look like a weirdo. <laughs> and um, then there was these couple of kids that just they watching me with the camera, and, uh -huh. and I saw them drive past me, and they pulled over and they were kind of standing behind me when I was taking this shot. So once I got the shot, I left. It was it was too late. I think it was after like a first Friday or something. 
Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, but it was late at night. But yeah, de- definitely daytime is for me. Yeah. Yeah, because once the sun starts, golden hour, where everyone starts, all mm-hmm. the portrait photographers and landscape photographers come out, is when I'm dead in the water. That's it's, too late it's, already. It's, it's not bright enough. There's not enough harsh light, and it's not dark enough for me to get my desire, oh. get, get the results I want. So. I see. No, well, this is a super nice shot um, taken at night. I mean, for me, I like the, the use of the lighting, you know, like how the light's coming down perfectly here. Yeah, I wish, uh, it's funny because a lot of the shots I take, yeah. I, I'm seeing one piece of it. And then when I post it, I get all these responses like, yeah. oh my gosh, and they're ma- they make me sound way better. I think that's a, you know, I think that's the beauty of photography, right? It's all interpretive. It's all objective, subjective, you know, whatever you want to call it, but it's, you know, open to everybody's opinion, their creativity and, you know, how they interpret this. And, you know, when I look at this and I see how the light's coming right down, right down on him, how Chinatown looks all weathered, it's, you know, it's like, damn, you know, it's a super nice shot. And, um, for you to see that driving by, I, I don't know, I think it's pretty, pretty nuts that you, that catches your eye and you can see this entire composition literally driving by something and have the no you know like the know-how to come back to it get your exposure on point before he gets up and walks away so yeah he um, wasn't going anywhere (laughs) he slumped over he was there for the night so i didn't have to worry too much but a lot it's funny because a lot of shots that i see that would probably be fantastic shots Uh i normally see when i'm late to be somewhere oh i'll see a shot and i'm like I'm, i'm i'm angry at myself for another two or three lights i'm cussing at myself I should have pulled over. I should have pulled over. I'm never going to get that opportunity again. So, so when you're driving, is your um, camera just hanging from no, your no, no. wrist like that? No, no, no. But it's in the seat next to me. It's in the seat next to me, yeah. And when I get in the car, I will set my settings for the kind oh, of you will. lighting conditions <laughs> that it is just okay, in case. Okay. That's the mark of a true professional yeah, because... Yeah. I don't know if I should say... There have been times where I've shot out the window. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So they, they don't what normally are you turn focus- out so like, What are you focusing on? Like, what? How would, how would you set your focusing for something like that where you're driving by your subject is you know it's not dead center so how like how would you if you know somebody listening how would you advise them on how to focus shooting out the car most street photographers get a lot in focus so they're not they're not they're not going for the bulk of their they're not wide open so, so I'm like normally F8? F, F, F8 to F16 is normally where I'm at okay uh, depending on the lighting um, my shutter speed is only pretty good. Like this one was a night one, so it was easy and I stopped. But mm-hmm. if I'm driving, I will just pop out and just, uh, and I don't use the burst mode. So I'm, I'm just like just pop, 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 pop. And hopefully I'm focusing all right. But at F8, F11, it's, you're pretty, you're going to get something. Right, right. No matter where that focus points hit. Yeah. In most, in most, I've missed a lot, but it's, Yeah. Was there anything you want to talk about? I mean, I know that, you know, I invited you into this, but was there anything that you want to talk about as far as, you know, like bringing more awe- awareness to street photography, the do's and the don'ts? Yeah, I mean, like, what would be a definite, what would be a definite don't if somebody was like, I'm a street photographer? What would you, you know, and if, if they're like, oh, I'm a street photographer, but I do this, what would be that big don't that you, 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 you would advise most not to do? Uh, let's see. That's a, most street photography is candid. So the people that stage their shots, I don't consider street photography other than street portraiture. There is street portraiture. And like with any genre, there's rules, there's rules to be broken, Mm -hmm. kind of thing like that. Um, the old masters, they call them would be, uh, you know, black and white, always landscape oriented. Um, no editing at all but mm-hmm. a lot of them were shooting film oh, so the, the so edit wasn't yeah too much room to edit yeah anyway. so i don't i don't edit a lot on mine and i i try to stay true to most of that I, although i shoot color i'm not a black and white mm-hmm. shooter if i shoot anything black and white it's because i screwed up the exposure and i'm trying to save a shot that I, I particularly like but the um but my editing is real real minor same thing you would do in a dark room mm-hmm. so i don't i don't remove anything i don't okay. add anything I don't manipulate the pixels that way. It's just uh, whatever I can't remove by slightly cropping, mm-hmm. straightening, or making something a little darker, then it stays. Oh, okay. So you'll see Coke cans in the background. And well, I mean, that like adds that. to it, right? That, that's, yeah. street, that's the street. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, so basically that's what it is, staging and and over editing your photos. The other one the other advice would be to uh have a camera with you at all no times. matter what you have, yeah. yeah. Most people have a phone with them, but you know, the, the point is is to get the shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and you found that that's your best walk around. I mean, have you yeah. used other point and shoots? Like I know um Rico makes a, a good point and shoot. Um Canon makes a pretty decent point and shoot too. Have you used any other brands their point and shoots yet? Yeah. I didn't know there was any other fo uh, cameras than Fujifilm. <laughs> Sorry no, about no, that, no, Diane. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We can't, no, I, can't really answer that. I, I started with Canon because I had Canon when I was shooting weddings. Mm -hmm. So um, I, that's how I started. So I bought a 35 and a 50, and that's what I went out with. It was still the Mark II, 5D Mark II, and the 50 millimeter 1.4 and the 35 F2. They were still kind of smaller. Yeah. Um, okay form factor so I, I started out with that um i haven't i don't like to use something i'm not going to buy so that's why people are always offering me to borrow stuff but yeah. i just refuse i don't want to touch it i don't i don't like touching something that i can't afford to buy or that i'm i plan on buying so i'm, I'm happy with what i have nice and hoy street shooters tell me about that is that um a local i mean of course hoy right so it's a local group street a bunch of um street photographers uh, it's just me. I just made a shirt <laughs> yeah. for me. Uh, uh, okay, so you, you had asked earlier about uh, like bringing recognition to street photography. Mm -hmm. So there is a group called H and L Street Collective, which I'm I was a part of. I was one of the founding members, and our goal was it was when I started in street photography, I had a hard time finding anything local. You know, all all the information I found were from people in the mainland mm -hmm. or or overseas, and um, after one of the um, shows over at Arts at Mark's Garage, I, I met a few other guys that shot street, so we kind of got together, formed a group, because our goal was to try to bring awareness that Hawaii is a is a very good uh, street photography hub. I mean, we got a we got a lot of variety in a small footprint just in Chinatown. We have Waikiki. You have all these different um, environments on, on one small island, so we were trying to bring awareness to that, and we got a pretty decent following. Our membership grew. Um, I stepped away because work, I couldn't make the commitment. Hawaii Street Shooters, and also, mm -hmm. they wanted to keep a lot of things inclusive, you know, keep it h and Street Collective, okay. the group members. But um, I wanted to do something to where anybody could shoot. So um, Hawaii Street Shooters was just a hashtag uh -huh. kind of a thing. I, I have a site, and what I do is as people post stuff with h, uh, Hawaii Street Shooters, I'll go through every so often, which is I don't do it a lot, and I will you know, re, re, uh, post some things oh, okay. for them. But nice. yeah, it's, it's just me. It's not a group. I would like it to be a group, but mm -hmm. I don't have the, the, the <laughs> well, time to do I it. I mean, I'm sure, you know, with the, um, you know, once I think, like you said, I think street, it's been around Hawaii is a great hub for it. Um, the different look, I mean, basically wherever you turn, there's some place, something going on and that's something to shoot. And I think bringing that awareness, more awareness of that, that Hawaii is a great place. I'm sure street, you know, street photography is definitely going to grow in the next few, you know, just keep growing from here on out. Um, so um, a lot of people think I'm undercover. So I was out shooting, actually this shot right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm kitty corner across there, kind of by, uh, was it the pig and the lady? Oh, okay. no, 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 no. The, um, oh my gosh, I can't even, damn, I'm just getting all these th things. Okay, so I'm out shooting this shot. And I'm at a, in a corner, and it's right across from the police station. And I noticed that day that there were a lot of cops out. And there's a lot of uh, guys that look like cops that weren't from Hawaii. So I'm just sitting there, kneeling down. And this is probably, okay, I was there for a long time on this one because I miscalculated the time. Because I had saw the shot, didn't get it one day, and I came back because I needed the light to be at a certain angle. So just one side of the, the scaffolding was lit. So while I'm down there, all these cops are walking around. I'm thinking some, something's going down. And as I'm sitting there, uh, after, after a bunch of them are walking by, looking at me, driving by, one of the cops walks up to me. They're in a group, and they're undercover. Mm -hmm. And he walks over to me. He goes, hey, uh, what are you taking photos of? I said, oh, I'm just taking photos of this, this corner. I'm just waiting for a green light with someone in green or a red light, someone in red or whatever's interesting. And he goes, if, funny story. We're having a big uh, a meeting here with people, you know, a, a lot of cops. And they're doing undercover stings in groups. So there was a whole lot. And he goes, during our meeting, uh, one of the guys goes, 
whose detail is that guy with? Because he's screwing things up with his camera. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. So they actually thought I was... A, a, undercover? Yes, yeah, just a, like a rookie undercover, just messing <laughs> messing things up. So then after that, I kind of... I, I, I laughed and we talked and then I, I left. I left, but it was just funny. So the, even if... If the cops think I'm undercover, yeah, then, you yeah. know, doing a good imagine, job of staying I, yeah, undercover. Yeah, exactly. I can imagine what the the other people are, are oh, thinking. Man. So. You have these mark builds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess, and, and that keeps me safe. I, I think in a lot of cases, because people don't know, they're not sure. Because mm -hmm. I, I am walking around like early morning, late at night, late night time, some, a lot of times. You know, it gets a little sketchy. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. It, it probably keeps me safe. I'm not, I'm not huge and intimidating, but I'm probably just built well enough to no keep questions. people guessing yeah. yeah yeah like am i worth the trouble kind of thing like that you know i remember that one shot that you had that was right in front of a a restaurant window it was an asian lady in like a nice hat she was eating her simon yeah. and you caught it when she turned right towards you she was you know food in her or like ready to eat her food um as you photograph these subjects is there any any legal stuff you have to worry about photographing them posting it and calling it your own is there anything that you need to worry about i think um like in that situation i shouldn't probably be shooting into an establishment she was right at the window though if you're on the street you're you're good i mean okay. a lot of buildings in, in the downtown have little markers placards on the sidewalk saying that our property you can't like photograph oh them. really Your hospitals are really strict too okay but um in most cases if you're on a public street you can shoot whatever you want i mean i know in other countries i heard that you can't take pictures of people without their consent mm -hmm. but uh, over here there's no law but everyone thinks there's a law so. is there yeah is there any type of like misinterpretation of the law or yeah, every, everyone what, thinks what's the, what's the most what's the biggest misconception somebody has about photographing somebody else out on the street yeah most people say that it's against the law to take my photo you can't take my photo mm -hmm. i didn't give you permission but on the public street you can take a picture of whatever you want there's nothing they can do about it yeah a lot of people think they know the law and they think that oh it's against the law to take my photo you have to get my permission you need to have a release but if they're on the street a public street then it's fair game there's nobody um there's no law saying that someone can't take a photo and plus we're in a tourist destination too i mean that's true someone's going to be in somebody's shot but mm -hmm. regardless if I'm, yeah. if I'm walking on a public street and i take a photo of somebody on a public street mm -hmm. um there's i'm completely protected mm -hmm. that was a funny story too i don't have that picture to show though i, I, I don't know where it's it at up. yeah i mean you can send it to me later um that one was funny because the mirrorless cameras have a delay when you put mm -hmm. the eyepiece up so i was seeing this lady eating her soup and she was really like going to town with this soup which i thought was funny so as i pulled the camera up my viewfinder went from black and it popped on but when it popped on she was looking at me and uh kind of freaked me out so i kind of flinched <laughs> snapped the shot and i ran like like a scared kid <laughs> it startled me so and she's probably i just probably ruined her whole day she had no idea what was going on well you know what? i hope one day she sees that shot that you took yeah this gonna it's, yeah that was a money shot perfect timing yeah right perfect expression and um yeah you know i think that's the that's the cool part about street photography it's so can it's it's candid yeah it's all in the moment you know i shoot a lot of portraits so i'm i do a lot of stand here stand there look over here do this do that but you know street is just um it's so free flowing, candid, and you know, really in the moment with whatever is going on. And I think that's the beauty of that genre of photography. Yeah, just candid, catching life as it happens. Yeah.